Alrighty, friends, we are back for your uh, favorite podcast show of the week. This is Location Weekly. Uh, it's episode number 693, and we are recording on November the 1st. Um, and with me today uh, is not Aubriana. It is Karsten uh, from Germany. Uh, how are you, my friend? Actually, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really good. So lots of traveling. So it's the high season of events now till the end of the month. So we had last week a W event where we announced our early access program to arrive VPS in those solutions. And uh, a lot is ongoing. We had a breakfast. A lot of LBMA partners were also involved. So yeah, great time. Our retail local is just two weeks ago in in, in Atlanta. So yeah, just very busy, uh, but still good. Uh, we have beautiful weather today here in uh, in in Germany. So it's fine. Yeah, it's good. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, just a uh, great time at Retail Local a couple of weeks ago with you uh, in Atlanta. I think you know we had a lot of good speakers. So. Uh... You know, just building on the momentum from that now. Uh, also, good weather here. We had 22 degrees here in Toronto yesterday, which is you know crazy for the last day of October. But uh, also, it was really great for the Halloween trick or treating for the kids. So it wasn't freezing cold and not raining. So that's good. Um, yeah, and uh, next week um, we're off to uh, Chicago for the Street Fight uh, Summit. So that'll be uh, interesting as well as, you know, uh, the world of location never ends. So uh, it's, you know, hence wh why we have a show, four stories to talk about today. So, and uh, I'll let you start us off uh, in Aubriana's normal role, but uh, I think an interesting first story in a company that's kind of been around forever, but making changes, yeah. go for it. Absolutely. So, so our friends from Foursquare are shifting its focus uh, to a single application now by not continuing its original City Guide application where they're famous for, uh, and they will stop this service on December 15. Uh, by retaining the data and the APIs uh, to su support the remaining app, so it's called Swarm. So, uh, so they shifted obviously from original the two app approach into a one app uh, approach um, where all the location-based marketing services uh, were in that SIPI app come now into Swarm, which is normally enabled the social check-ins. Um, this consolidation is expected to streamline Foursquare's offerings uh, and enhance consumer experience, so they say, uh, but we will have to find out. Um, so there's desperate financial concerns from users because uh, Foursquare releases the public uh, with a turnover of $100 million uh, by his data licensing business model. So let's see how this turns out. And also they um, allow now um, the users to delete their data uh, from the city guide. Uh, and you can carry it over to Swarm, but for me, the question is, uh, how does it affect the business model slash what does it mean in general going from this two app application approach into one? Um, yeah, but this is a question to your experience. So um, is that a trend right now? So consolidating apps, bringing together everything in one platform. And secondly, so what about the risks? Because if you're losing the, the data from the users or give them the opportunity to lead that things, <laughs> yes, you clean up, but what does that mean? Yeah, I think I think it's interesting. It's, uh, you know, the original City Guide app, when you look at it, you know, uh, the original Foursquare app, uh, you know, was collecting a lot of data, uh, POI data on the businesses, the visitation to those businesses, you know, foot traffic, you know, all that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, that was the the licensing, the revenue, the core revenue of the business, uh, you know, was really licensing that background data to power other location, you know, services within other apps. So for example, Twitter uh, for many, many years before, you know, uh, it became X, you know, the location awareness within Twitter was powered by Foursquare's data, uh, as were many other. Uh, so like, that's where a lot of their revenue was coming from. So you know, I wonder now uh, with this change, what that means for them in terms of, you know, the the quality of the data that they will have uh, on from a POI perspective going forward. Um, you know, and maybe it, it, it's just timing. Maybe it's also like, you know, you have open street maps, you have all these different uh, open source, you know, initiatives coming uh, where a lot of the players are, are, are cooperating with those. 
and putting their POI data in there for free. Um, so maybe, you know, the opportunity to actually generate revenue from that is, is disappearing. And they're seeing, you know, some of the fallout from that as well. So I think it's interesting. Um, you know, I, because I was there at the beginning of, you know, Foursquare and Gowalla and these other services back in those days in 2010, um, which is around the same time we started the LBMA, uh, you know, I never really made the switch to Swarm when, when it came out. I, uh, I downloaded it, but I never, I was, you know, I, I used Foursquare, I checked in on Foursquare, but when they made the transition, I kind of fell away from it personally. Um, so I don't, you know, really know what their kind of user base is like these days, but, uh, you know, a hundred million dollars is nothing to sneeze at in terms of revenue. So it's, it's, uh, it's significant and let's see where it goes from here. But, uh, I have my doubts that it's, uh, it will survive. You know, the one good thing I will say is allowing the users to delete their data if they wish is a good thing. I remember back in the day, normal, Gu sorry. uh, well, when Guala was acquired by Foursquare, or sorry, by Facebook uh, originally. Didn't have it, yes. They just just They didn't it. allow that. And the user base of Goala, who loved Goala, were not happy to become Facebook users and yeah. wanted to be able to remove their data, but there was no easy way to do that. And that was a big problem. So, you know, at least that lesson has been uh, picked up here and, uh, you know, they've been able to move forward from there. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Never been a big thing since years in, in Europe. So nobody's literally using Foursquare or Swarm at all. So you always try. I know when when we are on conferences, you open yeah. your Foursquare city guide. Okay, I'm the only guy who checked in here for a while. This this thing <laughs> happened. <laughs> Although you know, like the one market where they were huge, uh, and I think yeah. they're still quite big is Turkey. Uh, yeah, correct. Um, so they're you know had very good success there uh, in in that market. So maybe the next time you're there, Carson, because I know you're going there now. Yeah. Uh, regularly we have, a, we have a team you, down there and a lot of cooperation you can check it out and ask you know are well, they using foursquare or i will swarm? download swarm and we'll activate our account and see <laughs> what drives me so yeah maybe I'm coming back to check-ins but seeing all the young kids doing it uh, the check-ins with yeah. snap uh it's literally their location finder for friends so this is what they do so maybe it's for old people we will find out we'll find out yeah all right, moving on to our second story now. So this is an interesting one. This is a uh, University of, D of North Dakota. Um, two um, uh, researchers there have been working to develop a, a new method of location-based advertising that is privacy compliant. Uh, we know the challenges with this um, in our space is everybody's you know concerned about it. Um, so this uh, researcher, um, Mr. Palai, and uh, his collaborator, Dr. Wen Chen Hu, uh, have created this this new model uh, at the University of North Dakota. And so essentially, what this is, it's using advanced cryptographic um, uh, solutions to do uh, location awareness. So the idea being is whether neither neither the like the advertiser merchant uh, nor the consumer actually have to share their real location uh, at all. Uh, and so what the, there's kind of three parts to the system that enable this to happen. So there's what they call EI GAML encryption, which is a public key crypto system um, that allows data to be encrypted. Then they have a second component called private proximity testing, which, which is a way to uh, share your geographic uh, awareness without re revealing the location. And then they have a third party in the middle, which they're calling the mediator, um, which facilitates the communication of the data between the two. So this is kind of like Bitcoin or like cryptocurrency type of transaction. So, you know, I share my location, but it's an encrypted um, data uh, as a consumer, let's say. And, and, Previous to this, I've defined the types of brands, types of advertising that I'm interested in. And then basically the mediator holds that uh, information in the middle uh, and the advertisers and the merchants, the retailers are sending their locations and their advertising in an encrypted format as well. And then the mediator receives this it's all encrypted. The mediator doesn't even know your location, but then creates this matching between the two and then ads, you know, that are relevant are delivered to the consumer, uh, you know, that, that they're interested in. So it's kind of an interesting 
method i think it you know it it could have some some you know unique uh use cases around that um and certainly uh you know companies like google and apple you know that have been you know clamping down on on privacy and and you know uh you know, the allowing app developers to, to, you know, really have, you know, blanket access to sharing location. This could be a different way to go about that. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's, it's, uh, you know, it could be a powerful uh, way to do this uh, without actually revealing, you know, true, true location data. So um, yeah, I, it's, I don't have a lot more to say about it, but I, I, I like what they've done. I, I like that they're kind of playing on these principles of, you know, cryptographic, you know, um, encryption. Um, and really, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a lot like, you know, the way cryptocurrencies work and, and other things in terms of how you share information without actually sharing information. So any thoughts from you? Well, absolutely. So we see more, more, more coming that, um, this secure transfer from data of any kind is uh, crucial and, uh, accepted. And you have a new touch point with your potential um, customer, client, advertising, uh, consumer uh, by just explaining it and say, okay, hey guys, uh, you know, what we are doing is this and that, and this is the value you can get out of it. And we ensure that this data is protected. And I don't know either where you are, but we can match it uh, with the identifier. So that makes makes totally sense for me. And now having um, um, the technology available and it's affordable uh, to make this happen, we will see it more and more. Um, it was always, you know, our data in the location world is always questionable. So it's uh, a lot of interpretation in the market and there's also a lot of ad fraud. So um, just to, to be in a brand's position to say, okay, I have the opportunity uh, to do something location-based, which is kind of better secured than before, uh, is bringing new mar it's opening new markets, uh, I, I think, and therefore new advertising dollars where we hadn't before because companies step back because of this. Okay, come on. Uh, this is not the truth. This connected TVs reports you showed me. We never sold so many TVs that that this is possible. So you, you know this, yeah, uh, in this area. So um, it will help. Uh, there's an explanation. Um, as long as there is no standard, it's just a standalone initiative. So I think the next big step could be just um, talk with the associations and define the standard with the IAB or all the other guys and say, okay, uh, this is this is possible now. And then as we had it before, um, you have to have to market and then go the way. So I think it's, it's, it's a good initiative and nice to see uh, technology is developing for something good in this kind. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not standing still, right? Like we're continuing to evolve and, and develop further, you know, ways to do this and, and keep the industry moving. So Absolutely. What what a great handover from advertising uh, to advertising. <laughs> so our next story is about Ogilvy in India has unleashed its newest campaign for Google search. Uh, and they are using, they title it Googlies for Goggle, uh, the campaign. And what they literally do is they... Um, they will have a campaign running over six weeks where the users uh, encounter 50 quickie googlies, which are intriguing questions um, designed to spark curiosity. So you can answer these questions in the search and by easy clicking on that uh, right, wrong, whatever, you get... Um, yeah, a surprise. So it's about gamification. The Googlies appear in various touch points from social media to TV to grocery packings. And um, they should enhance deeper search interactions by turning everyday moments into a playful discovery. And it's about gamification at the end of the day. And, uh, and, and there's, oh, there's something new um, uh, coming up on Ogilvy uh, aims to elevate uh, the search experience with that uh, into a journey and yeah, in enhance learning and engagement. So for me, gamification and marketing is always something cool, unexpected when it comes. Uh, I like the, the, the naming of it, the googlies, yeah, <laughs> googlies, however you pronounce it in the right way, uh, could be playful. Um, but 
I'm missing a bit this location-based component uh, and 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 the the idea behind it. Uh, so may you have more information about that? Yeah, I I, I mean I think it's less location and and more about the gamification piece, yeah. as you you pointed out. But uh, it's interesting. I watched a uh, a video earlier uh, about one of the examples of of these googlies. And it's 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 Not fun. Diverse, by the way, it, it's, just... it, it, it's a super fun thing. It's like, um, uh, you know, at, like asking questions that are like, you know, trying to understand like facts. So, so like one of the examples they gave is, are peanuts peas or nuts? Yeah, good question. Right? It's a good question. Are they peas or are they nuts? You know, like you know, maybe you don't know, and so, you know, you can ask this kind of question, and then like it comes back because obviously they've designed these questions uh, to come back from Google with very funny, you know, interesting answers, not the normal answers that you would get. Um, and I think it's also interesting that they've done this, you know, with Google because uh, I did a little bit of research, um, and in India where this is happening, uh, Yahoo. Uh, is still uh, like 34%, you know, usage of of Yahoo search engine and Bing also uh, is being used by about 30% of the population. So, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, everybody's using Google, right? So they still have to try to drive, you know, some, uh, some of the, the usage, you know, to Google or increase the usage of Google. They're still the number one, no question, but you know, Yahoo, first of all, we don't even have Yahoo here in North America. It's long gone. Um, you know, from that perspective, you know, Bing is there, but, um, you know, just to see that, you know, uh, they're trying to, you know, drive more, uh, usage of Google as a search engine in India and then creating some gamification fund campaign around that. I, I like it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't have a lot to say, more to say, but I think it's, 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 it's super fun and, and interesting. And, you know, anytime, as you said, you can add gamification to something, I think it's, uh, it makes it you know, much more uh, engaging, even like when we used to have the, the little, um, I forgot what they called them, like the, the Google logo, they would change it with yeah. like cool the images, art. the art. Yeah. Like even those things, you know, just kind of recognizing those or seeing those like was, was fun. Right. So uh, they're, they're still, stick, still sticking to this, um, as plain as possible. Don't touch the user interface, but, um, starting playing around first with the logo and all with campaigns where you just, um, yeah, activate users to do something uh, new with it um, and use it in a different way uh, is also because a lot of people are just searching for one word. They're not yes. asking questions, they're, but yeah. they're supposed to ask questions because the results are so much better if you type in your question with a question mark at the end of the day because may others did the same before and they had a discussion about that, yeah. Okay, on to our final story for this week. So we're going to talk about a company uh, that we haven't talked about here before. Uh, it's called Air Doctor, um, and this is you know kind of a startup. They just raised a Series B uh, round of twenty million dollars in total. They raised fifty million dollars to date, um, and this is a uh, a company that's trying to help with the uh, travel medical insurance space. And so essentially, you know, anybody who's traveled overseas, you know, on vacation, you know, in the past, you know, anytime I've gone on vacation down south or those kinds of things with the family, uh, you always take out, you know, extra travel insurance and these kinds of things, because, you know, if you were to have some sort of medical issue, uh, you know, in another country, uh, it isn't necessarily easy to get uh, help or coverage or to pay for that. Um, because it's not like being at home where you have, you know, your healthcare system, uh, that, you know, you're approved for and, and so on. So, um, this is the problem that they're trying to solve. So things like finding doctors who speak your language, uh, locally, you know, finding doctors where your insurance that you have, you know, will be accepted, um, and uh, and those kinds of things is really you know what they're trying to do. So essentially, they've built a platform um, that matches doctors. So they've signed up uh, about twenty thousand doctors. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, twenty thousand doctors onto this. They've uh, partnered now with about eighteen major health insurance uh, providers. Uh, they're operating in eighty four countries. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I, I, I totally get this. I think this makes a ton of sense. Um, you know, and, and I love it too, because it was, you know, the founder, uh, uh, you know, this, the, the whole thing was created out of a personal need and experience, right. Um, you know, which, you know, those are the best kinds of companies that you can have, right. When you actually have a problem and then you actually build something to address that issue. So, you know, um, she, uh, the, the lady who, who founded this, um, uh, um, travels a lot uh originally from uruguay and then she she was giving this example of uh you know being with her her son and uh that uh they were in greece and you know they couldn't uh couldn't find a receptionist that could speak english you know uh the, the, you know obviously the character set is totally different um you know than you know the the latin letters um and all those kinds of things uh so they couldn't figure out where to go to get help you know, so all these kinds of things, um, you know, led to the creation of this this platform, and I, I think it's it's great. Uh, obviously, they're attracting a lot of venture capital behind it. Um, they didn't talk specifically about you know what their revenue or their valuation looks like, but you know, if you've raised fifty million dollars, you know, on this on two two major rounds, um, you must be doing something right and generating you know a lot of usage on the platform. And it, it, so there's a big location component to this in terms of where you are, where the doctors are, where the uh, services are that match to what your needs, uh, you know, are, are for that particular situation. They're not alone in this space. There's others that are trying to do this. There's a company called Feather, uh, which is uh, building an insurance platform for expats. Uh, there's another company um, called Amoon, um as well in this space um but uh when you look at the venture capital behind it you're you, there's major players behind this insurance companies uh that are backing this samsung ventures lightspeed ventures i mean you know um all sorts of players that uh you know we're uh we're quite familiar with so uh very interesting platform yeah so yeah so we all handled with this insurances. So we have it in our credit cards or on the automotive uh, associations where we are members of. And they have this personal assistant, which you can call. But I was always wondering where they collect their data um, or trust for. So uh, making their uh, a scalable global platform out of it sounds really huge. It's not just one player, it's millions of millions of players, not 20,000 doctors you can connect. It's just the beginning. Uh, yeah. Think about how many people are traveling, uh, how many accidents are happening on the world, how many people need help. And if you can centralize this and then standardize this information, because it comes down to where is the guy right now uh, or what happened, where, and who can help, where, and who is available. So this is crucial location data at the end of the day. Uh, so it makes a ton of sense for me and will solve, I guess, for lots of insurance companies and providers of those services, um, a lot of problems and increase the quality drastically. Yeah. And, and the language awareness of, of that is yeah. a huge piece too, right? Because, you know, it's, you know, you're traveling all over, you know, on these places and, you know, generally speaking, like, you know, if you're in Latin America, you know, and you're not speaking Spanish, it's a problem, you know? So or Portuguese depends on where or you Portuguese are. Portuguese in Brazil. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Anyhow, I, I think fantastic uh, yeah. solution. Would love to learn more about this. Maybe we could have them at a retail loco to talk about this. Absolutely. One of our executive summary talks, whatever. Yeah. Uh, love to learn more. more. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's our show for this week. Uh, you've been listening and watching episode number 693. Uh, we thank you for your time. As always, if you have story ideas, reach out to us. If you have feedback, we want to hear about that too. Uh, and we'll be back next week with another show. So thank you everybody for your time. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm.